Hi, I hope you're all okay. My name is Jen Greaves and this channel is all about figuring out the messiness of life brackets with type 1 diabetes and as of this week I've been trying to figure that one out for 24 whole years. Yep, it was the anniversary of my type 1 diabetes diagnosis this week which within the community is called a diversary. Now I think it's a bit of a funny one because I don't really think type 1 diabetes should be celebrated because it crashes into people's lives and completely turns their worlds upside down. However, I do think it's absolutely worth acknowledging the amount of effort it requires every single day to keep going with this thing, to keep yourself alive, to try and grapple with it and figure out what it's demanding of you and the amount of strength and resilience it takes anyone with any kind of chronic illness or any kind of struggle to keep going, to stop yourself from getting overwhelmed and hopefully try and keep smiling along the way. And I also really definitely want to take a moment to absolutely appreciate the tiny vials of insulin that keep me alive, which I have free and unquestioned access to, that is not the case globally. The technology which slowly but surely is making things easier for people living with a chronic illness like type 1 diabetes and the endless amount of people in my life, healthcare professionals, friends, family, the online community who have supported me, helped me, helped me learn, helped me live with this thing, deal with this thing, distract me from this thing. There are so so many people in my life that I think have also been impacted by my type 1 diabetes. So my diversary is a moment to reflect on a few things for sure. So to mark this particular diversary, I thought it might be quite nice to list 24 lessons in 24 years living with type 1 diabetes. Particularly on the tough days, it can be so hard to take anything at all from living with type 1 diabetes, but I have learned so much about my health, about my body, about the world, and about life in general. You might not agree with everything that I say, and that's absolutely fine. The beauty of life and perspective is that we're all allowed to think and feel differently there's room for it all so please do leave a comment below and let me know some of the lessons that living with type 1 diabetes has taught you and we can share some stuff and if you do enjoy this video please give it a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you are enjoying what you are watching I've no idea how this is going to go I will try not to waffle on too much otherwise we will be here forever so let's see what happens <laughs> number one it's going to be okay Diagnosis is a lot. There is a lot going on, there's a lot to take in, this alien vocabulary is flying around, there's hormones everywhere, it's probably a bit stressful, and chances are if you've just been diagnosed you haven't been feeling great for a little while. So just know that it does get easier, you can take one day at a time, and type 1 diabetes doesn't mean that you can't live the life you want to live. Two is resilience. Resilience is about emotional strength and, quote, the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties. I think people living with type 1 diabetes display incredible resilience every day because we're constantly adapting and recovering from the difficulties that it throws our way. And it is a demanding chronic condition that we constantly have to adapt and react to. So there is so much resilience within living with type 1 diabetes. Three is compassion. The so-called invisible nature of living with something like type 1 diabetes has given me so much compassion for what other people might be going through. In my head constantly, I'm making about 438 decisions at any one time around living with type 1 diabetes and how that fits into my life. It has shown me that you have no idea what other people might be dealing with, big things and small things, and whatever that may be, if it's affecting you, if it's preoccupying you, it's absolutely valid. Four is connection. Although living with type 1 diabetes is isolating at times, it has offered me so much connection in my life that wouldn't have otherwise been there. It's a point of common ground for a lot of people. As I open up, I find that other people respond in kind. Whether they have type 1 diabetes or not, it's a point of being able to relate to someone and what they are going through and something they're experiencing. And it goes without saying that the type 1 diabetes online community has been such an incredible source of connection over a whole load of years now and I'm so so grateful for that. Five, comparison. Brackets, there's no such thing as a perfect diabetic. There's some sort of trite quote I think I could throw in here about your beginning being someone else's middle. Is that the right way around? But it's true. 
what takes you 100% of effort might only take someone else 10% of effort and that shouldn't make you feel bad. You cannot compare your own lifestyle with type 1 diabetes to someone else because we all have different perspectives, our bodies are all completely different, we have different diets, we don't have different access to technology, we have different levels of privilege and all of this impacts how we are able to manage our diabetes and therefore the outcomes in terms of the numbers. Do what you can do and don't worry about everyone else. Learn from others, sure, but don't compare yourself. And also with that, try not to put that pressure on yourself to be perfect because there is no such thing as a perfect person living with type 1 diabetes. There, I'm sure, isn't anyone out there living 100% of their time in range, making no funny, funky decisions that have funny, funky outcomes and getting it right 100% of the time. And even if that did exist, I think I'd rather take being able to live my life, go out for dinners and have fun and build memories any day. I'll take the odd squiffy blood sugar, thanks very much. Six, it's not just about the numbers. Oh lordy, right. The numbers are such a small part of the equation and for me now, I often see them as a signifier of other things that might be going on in my life. For me, there are so many big factors at play, the main ones being sleep, diet, exercise or movement, stress and well-being and, and how my mind is feeling and then my sense of purpose and what I've got going on in my life that makes me feel fulfilled essentially. And obviously those are quite broad strokes so within that there's many 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 other contributing factors that all affect those numbers. So that tiny little number that we can so easily place so much weight on is not a signifier of whether I'm right or wrong or good or bad. I have to say that this for me has been very liberating because it frees me up and it takes all that pressure off the numbers and that means I worry less and therefore the numbers tend to get a little bit better because I'm not putting all that stress on myself. Seven is to kind of squish together. Your health is ultimately your responsibility and with that you will never stop learning. I've learned over the years that ultimately the only person who can really make me feel better is me. The consultants and the healthcare professionals and the nurses are all there to offer support, sure, but at the end of the day it's me that's living with this thing 24-7, 365 and I'm the one that needs to hold myself accountable for my health and take action and take responsibility for it. Easier said than done, I totally understand, I've been there, but I've found that if I give my diabetes a little bit of room and a little bit of the attention that it screams at me sometimes, it affects all other areas of my life in such positive ways. My productivity, my mood, my friendships and relationships, my ability to do a good job and go out and do all the things I want to do. I want to give myself a chance to be able to do that and I found that the more I do that the more there is to learn, you will never stop learning. You don't need to be learning all the time but 24 years into living with type 1 diabetes I'm still figuring things out, I'm still getting things wrong and that's okay but I am making room for my type 1 diabetes. 8. Nothing is permanent. This may sound a bit weird but I find it greatly comforting to know that nothing in life is permanent. When I was younger I thought that there were certain blocks you had to climb and then your life was all wrapped up in a bow and you were done. But much like living with type 1 diabetes, there is no formula that means that you can crack it and you've completed the game of life or completed the game of type 1 diabetes. It's meant that I don't take anything for granted, I appreciate the moments where I feel good, where I'm happy, where I'm doing fun things because I know that life just throws up stuff, that's just the nature of life and things are going to change. So you can appreciate more the good moments when they do happen and also in the bad moments know that this too shall pass. 9. Diabetes is not always to blame. It can be so tempting to carry diabetes like this huge weight on your shoulders that's impacting everything in your life and causing you to have a really shit time. And definitely there are moments when it does cause you to have a really shit time and you don't want to deal with it and you wish it would just go away. But I cannot attribute everything that goes wrong to my diabetes. Diabetes just isn't at fault that much of the time. And if I think like that, I reduce its power because it doesn't then have the power to impact my life in that way. Ten. Pizza. How is pizza a lesson? It's just dough and tomatoes and cheese. So simple, right? No, 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 no. The hardest food to fathom when it comes to blood sugar outcome 
is the simple, innocuous, delicious pizza. But you know what? I'm gonna keep eating pizza because pizza is yum. I cannot tell you the number of nights I've gone to bed with a seemingly decent blood sugar, only to wake up in the night gasping for water because that delayed release of the glucose has sent my blood sugars sky high. It's annoying, but it's so good. 11, people want to help and you can ask for help. I spent so many years being quite defiant about the fact that this was my condition, my illness, and I was just dealing with it. Don't worry about it, it's just a thing, it's not that bad. I don't feel like that anymore. I'm willing to say that it is a lot and it takes up a lot of my headspace and is a big part of my life. I used to see diabetes as a separate thing that was coming along for the ride that I had to deal with begrudgingly. Diabetes for me is very much a part of me, and with that I can absolutely ask for help, whether that's from a professional, whether it's the opinions of other type ones, or whether I just want to go to my friends and do something that has absolutely nothing to do with type one diabetes. That's absolutely acceptable because I don't have to carry this thing on my own. 12, but you should also try and help people. This is very personal to me and I'm not saying everyone should go out there and be saving lives because I'm certainly not, but I think it's a case for me of reach as you climb. Over the years I've felt terrible about my type 1 diabetes and now I don't feel so bad. It's a reason why I think I've kept going over the years consistently and inconsistently with putting this content out there and putting my life out there and showing all the real bits and the weird bits and the ugly bits. And people may not want to hear it or absolutely find me really irritating, that's absolutely fine. And I think that extends beyond my type 1 diabetes as well. Just having that awareness that people might be having a really shit time and if someone's in need of help, it only takes a minute to help them carry their bag up the stairs or make eye contact and smile or ask the stranger in a shop how their day is. And you never know who really needs to hear it and who might come away smiling because of something you've done or said, something really, really small. And I'm really, really grateful for this lesson of being a bit more selfless and being a bit more hopefully helpful. And I think it's a really important one. 13, some days are just rubbish. It's just the way it is. You can do everything right and some days type one diabetes just gets on in there and gets in your headspace and makes itself known and you feel pants. Those days are the days where I just want to come home, take my bra off, shut the door, shut down communication, zone out with something on the telly and hide. And I think for me it's important that I do that, that I set that boundary, that I allow myself to feel it and don't pretend that everything's fine when it's not. That for me is really important because otherwise it comes back to bite me a few days later. Um, and just strike it off as a bad day and know that tomorrow is a new day and we can try again. 14. Diabetes does not define you. We hear this said over and over again to the point that sometimes it loses its meaning, but it's absolutely true. Life is short, but it's also long, and you've got this absolute lifetime of blood sugar readings and decisions to make and management and trying to keep on top of things and trying to juggle everything. So with that, a day or a week or even a period of time where your diabetes isn't quite playing ball does not make you a bad person. It does not mean you're a failure. You're trying to replicate an organ, so it's so important that we acknowledge that and be kind to ourselves because that is not an easy task. With that, diabetes doesn't have to be the first thing that people see or think when they think of you. Clearly, I have no problem with talking about my type 1 diabetes, but type 1 diabetes isn't all that I am. Far from it. It's a big part of my life, yes, but my life is made up of so much more stuff. I am not simply my diabetes. I am so much more than my diabetes. 15. It's okay to set boundaries. This is something I've only really learned in the past couple of years. I used to want to run around at 100 miles an hour doing everything, saying yes to everything, being all things to all people, pleasing everyone, and I've come to realise that not only is that not possible, it's simply not doing me any favours, not my heart, not my head, not my soul, and it's okay to say no. Bear in mind that type 1 diabetes is requiring a lot of energy in the first place, so there's only so much I can give before I completely fall over and all the wheels come off. I've learned 
recently as I've felt more comfortable with myself, as maybe I've felt more confident with my surroundings and colleagues, that I can put my hand up and say, I've had a really bad night of hypos, so it's gonna take me a little while before I get going today. Or I need to say no tonight because I'm really not doing okay with my type 1 diabetes. And again, it doesn't have to be about your diabetes. We're allowed to set boundaries in life. Not everyone is deserving of all of our energy all of the time. It's well within us and within our rights to do things that preserve and protect us as well. I totally get that there's a sense of vulnerability in this and I think that's what held me back for a long time, but I'm no longer trying to prove to anyone, least of all myself, that I'm invincible because I'm not. 16, the emotional part of living with type 1 diabetes is so much harder than the physical. Stabbing yourself with a needle? Sure, dial me up. Dealing with the relentless day-to-day -day in here of type 1 diabetes? Oh my good God. 17. You will never stop overcorrecting hypos. It's called hypo hangry, it gets me in the middle of the night, and I just can't be tamed. 18, you will become a super planner ahead of aurora. It's a sophisticated skill that will be honed in years of service to type 1 diabetes. Every day we have dozens, if not hundreds, of extra decisions to make because of this chronic chaos. And with that, type 1 diabetics are particularly skilled at thinking three, four, 30, 300 steps ahead. Every time I look at a blood sugar meter reading, I'm thinking, what have I just done? What am I about to do? How stressed am I? How hot is it? How much sleep did I get last night? What am I about to eat? When should I eat? When should I take my insulin? Do I need to adjust for anything in particular? How many steps have I done today? How many steps am I about to do? Am I going to the gym tonight? Am I meeting anyone? When will I next be home? And every time I leave the house, I'm thinking, where's my spare pod? Have I got enough insulin in that vial? Have I got enough backups? Do I need any more hypo fixes? Are there orange juice and sweets in my bag? When am I next going to be home? Have I got time to wolf this down because I've had my insulin? My insulin's already working, but I don't want to eat just yet because then I'm going to get a big fat spike. So I need to wait another 10 minutes, but then I need to be on the tube. I really want to eat on the tube. And on and on it goes. We are ninjas. 19, your body is amazing. Living with type 1 diabetes and everything that it entails is the result of just a few tiny beta cells going kaput. The consequences are huge, as anyone living with type 1 diabetes is all too aware. And so the effort it takes to survive with type 1 diabetes has given me such an amount of appreciation for what the rest of my body must be going through every second of every day just to keep me living and breathing, to keep my digestive, system, my, gesti my digestive system working, my brain functioning, clearly it's not happening at the moment, and everything else it takes for me to grow, for my skin cells to renew, for my eyesight to work, for my hands to do what my brain is thinking I want them to do, it is incredible. Those cells may have given up the ghost, but my body hasn't failed me at all. My body is trying to keep me alive and my body is amazing. So I try my hardest not to shame it, to love it, to nurture it, to be kind to it. And some days that means being super healthy and going for a run. Other days, the healthiest thing I can do for my body is go out and have a good time with my friends, laugh my head off, have a glass of wine and enjoy dessert if I want to. 20, people will always say stupid things. Humans are flawed. Often they have the best of intentions, but some people will not be able to stop themselves giving you their opinion of how you should be managing your diabetes. Whether you should be eating that, whether you should be on a pump or injections, and whether you should, in fact, hurry up and try cinnamon because it really is the cure. It is completely up to you whether you want to engage in a conversation and try and educate those people, or whether you simply want to walk away and get on with your life. For me, it can vary depending on who it is, the situation I'm in, whether I can be bothered, but whatever you choose to do and however you manage your diabetes is completely up to you. And some people are just very, very, very good at saying stupid things. It is hot and her today. 21, say yes, then figure it out. Life is for living and type one diabetes should not get in the way of that. Over the years, I have been known to be quite spontaneous, although I'm never reckless. And although I can't dismiss my diabetes completely in the decisions I make, the decisions I've made, I've always made them and then worked out how I fit my diabetes into that, not the other way around. Whether that be going to festivals, going on holidays, going traveling, going to parties, if you want to have children, if you want to join the circus, you should be able to do whatever it is that you want to do. There will be a bit of extra work involved, but it is not insurmountable. And the experiences you have, I think, completely outweigh that extra bit of planning that we have to do. I've often said yes, then figured it out afterwards, 
or figured it out along the way and it's always served me pretty well. Although you should make sure you've got enough luggage because type 1 diabetes does not travel light. 22. The simple things are what matters. For me, living with something as permanent and at times as all-consuming as type 1 diabetes has really made me appreciate the simple things in life. There is no joy like waking up and realizing you've had an alarm-free night or nailing that pre-bolus or not overcorrecting a hypo or just making it through a day with type 1 diabetes where it hasn't made itself known and gate crashed front and center of your headspace. I have a childlike delight for the simplest of things and I think it's maybe my personality anyway but I definitely think type 1 diabetes has fed into that. I am weirdly emotional about sunsets and I love freshly washed bed sheets, things like that. Being able to breathe, I mean it means that there is something great to be seen in the everyday even though some days it's really hard to be able to appreciate it. Celebrate the wins because you're a superhero. 23 say goodbye to your dignity. It doesn't matter how many years you've lived with type 1 diabetes and how much you've learned and how much you think you've got it figured out, diabetes will come at you in the most awkward, inconvenient situations. One of my most spectacular and memorable fails was having a hypo in my broken down car in a lay-by on the side of a motorway when I was in the middle of a three hour tailback and I had absolutely nothing on my person that was going to fix this hypo and my blood sugar was dropping fast. But I knew if I called an ambulance, that would also take ages to get to me because of the aforementioned three hour tailback. So I had no choice but to get out of my car and stumble over to a lorry that thankfully was sharing this lay-by with me, wake up a man who was having a sleep on the side of the road and ask him if he had any food on him. It was not cool, but it did save my life. Thank you so much to that man. He has no idea what he did for me that day. The memories keep on coming. I've had to leave courtrooms before where I've been reporting to go and treat a hypo, which has meant I've had to have my bag searched on the way out and the way back in, which took an inordinate amount of time and meant that I basically completely missed the whole story. I've had my Omnipod fall off during sex, I've had hypos during sex, I've had hypos during really important work interviews with shiny, shiny celebrities. I've lost count of the amount of times that a juice box meant for a child has saved my life. This just isn't a dignified disease. Or maybe it's just me. 24. You will eat chocolate again, and again, and again. I was told when I was first diagnosed in 1996 that I would never eat sweets again. Oh, how wrong they were. That is one of my main takeaways from my diagnosis because I was eight years old and sweets were very important to me at that time in my life. I'm not really a big sweet fan anymore, but I am a chocolate fiend and I eat chocolate very regularly and I intend to for the rest of my days. 25, there is always hope. This is a bonus round because apparently I can't count to 24, but I thought it was important to end on a positive or a hopeful note at least. Not that talking about chocolate isn't positive because it absolutely is, but please know that if you're struggling with where you're at with your type 1 diabetes right now, or if you've just been diagnosed and it feels like a whole lot of whoa, please know that it will get better. It will take a bit of time and it will take a bit of effort, which may be something you don't feel like you have to give right now, but it does get better and easier. And with that, the amount of effort required does get less. I've been through some dark times in life and with my type 1 diabetes, often both at once, because that's just how it works. But I think most of the lessons that I've rattled off today have come as a result of going through those times and I can see that now I'm out the other side and I might sound all preachy and martyr-like and I know that I don't get it right all the time. I know that things are going to go wrong again because that's just the nature of life. But please know that if you feel bad right now, you won't always feel bad. There is always hope. 